Hi, I'm Daniel Nis, Asheville Weekly, episode 128. It's Monday morning. I'm in the yard. Uh, we had somebody new start in our finance team today, and they're the first person who ever started at Asheville and brought a cake. So they have already done very well in my books. So hopefully they run with as much enthusiasm into the finance role as they did as they walked in today with a lovely cake. Look how I'm smiling. That's how I know I love the cake. I took them on a tour of the yard, explaining what the different lorries are, the difference between buying material and providing service, what will be expected of them and the general culture within the business. Hopefully this helps them settle in a little bit more. I can see on the cameras, they are now at their desk, sorting out the mobile phone and everything else. I can see there is a fuel delivery outside, which is good because we're down to our last thousand liters. We now have 20,000 liters in the yard. And at the refurbishment project, the work continues. We continue with the underfloor heating. Here you can see crisp popping the pipes into the clamps. This section of the roof is almost done and we have prepared the next section with the breathable underlay and the 2 by one treated battens. We need to cut a couple of tiles because we're getting into some intricate spaces. We have them ready and now we lay up. Once finished, we're gonna jet wash the entire roof so all the tiles will look the same. Here in the master bedroom, we put up a temporary tower so we can put steel in place so we can extend the vaulted ceiling. With this section of the roof now done, we can prepare it for tiling with breathable underlay and two by one treated battens. I popped into the yard a minute ago and I had to uh, measure up for a riddle bucket for the 926 to 26 tonner. So we had to measure the distance uh, between the pins, the length of the pins. Then we had to take a picture of the quick hitch as well because there's so many different variations. Now I'm not looking for a brand new one or someone to make one from scratch, fabricate one. A second hand one, just so we can see how that riddle bucket works. Just so if we've got like a bit of sand or soil, we can pick it up and give it a bit of a shake and just keep the big rocks and big bits of stone in it because that's the gold dust in there. And the work, on the second Volvo tipper to get that radiator sorted is now started properly. Um, my 12 o'clock canceled on me and then my two o'clock also canceled on me. I speak to someone earlier who works at another company and they were like, I did this today and I did that and I did this and I had to do that and I had to get into work at this time and I did this and they kept going on about it. And then I said, in my Roy, this is my best impression of Roy Keane, in my Roy Keane voice. That's your job. That's your job. <laughs> you know, and people are gassing to you about what they've been doing. And you're like, but hold on, isn't that what you're meant to be doing? And when I gave them my impression of Roy Keane in my Roy Keane voice, they, uh, they didn't take to it kindly. They said they called me back and they didn't call me back. So I think they're fuming. Anyway, Mikey went to a job we finished a long time ago. We did a video on it. It was a two million pound penthouse that we finished. The client said that there was a problem with a bit of water on the threshold. So inside we've got a walnut floor and outside we've got a hardwood decking. And we were worried that maybe the water was building up in the balcony. So we went and cleaned all the drains and made sure that any water that falls between the decking, because there's very slight gaps that it was draining away. Everything looked to be fine, but Mikey did a bit of work anyway. He had to drill a few additional holes in the threshold and he had to add some silicone so hopefully that problem is solved but now that mikey's in the yard we are going to continue the work on the new concrete water tank and we're going to start running that blue pipe round the back of the material bays and try and get the front of it connected as well Tuesday morning, I'm in the yard. Time is five to seven. I have a voiceover session for the TV show and the team take about an hour to set up. So they're just gonna begin putting everything in place. I can see that we have a cement delivery and yesterday on the Volvo, uh, we finished the work changing the radiator, but then we had an inspection of the lorry and we realized that 
there's a little bit of a seat on the rear diff there's a tiny bit of a leak and on a dashboard it says uneven brake wear again we're gonna have to do something because it keeps saying that so for now we'll change the pads we're gonna do the rear diff seal and see how we get on morning time is 702 p.m and earlier the guys were able to install the signs you can see behind me now And in the railway yard, the water tank is now connected and it's filling. It's only trickling and it's going to take a while for it to fill up. But it's the end of play on Tuesday and it is now about 10% <laughs> full. So tomorrow we're going to start on the pipework at the front. But as you can see, the connection here is already in place. I didn't have any time to be in the yard today. After my voiceover, all I did was try and catch up, catch up, catch up, catch up, and I was chasing my tail. I'm gonna go gym now, get my second wind, and then try to crack on again with some more emails and schedule for the morning. I'll be back here bright and early. It's Wednesday morning. <clears throat> And I am in the car, but I'm not really on the road again because I'm heading to the yard. I've got to be in the yard for a uh, document signing. Apparently there's no trust in this world. And some companies, they want to see the whites of your eyes when you're signing. They're not even having any of that electronic DocuSign, which we actually have set up now. There are a load of standalone videos that, that I want to do, but I have no time because there's so many things within the business I have to do. I was up till half 11 last night working out job ads, staffing no matter what being one of the challenges in the business that continues. Every time you think that you've spent ages and you've got the right people in place and everything works well and it's a great team and there's a great vibe, then next thing you know, one of the people's personal circumstances changes. It's just ongoing. Speaking of which, at the moment, we're looking for a videographer. Our digital platform and our footprint means that we have so many avid followers that it makes hiring for jobs even more difficult. You think it would help. We put out a job ad and we'll put how much, we'll put the experience you need, we give all the information. And one of the key things we'll say is you need to be local or you need to have like your own car, your own transport, because we're just trying to think long term. You tell people the parameters and then they say, I don't fit this parameter, I don't fit that parameter, I've never done this job and I know nothing about it, but if you spend time and you teach me and you pay me more than the job ad and then I can learn from you and use you as a stepping stone to start my own business, that would be good. Please reply, thank you. And then send about six or seven, one question mark a week for the next 10 weeks and then write a message and say, ah, oh, you don't answer people, you don't have time for people. While, like you probably think it's jokes, you have to sift through that to get to the real job applicants. And it makes it increasingly difficult and it means you need to put more time into it. Ah, so staffing is a problem. And we have another problem at our refurbishment project. Yesterday, we accepted the delivery. So the gates are closed the entire time. We have super high hoarding. We have security. We have an alarm on the scaffold. We got a bit of CCTV and we had the delivery yesterday and the gate was open for one second and two guys came in and they stole some copper. And guess who's got to pay for that? I got to pay for that now. You're trying to work on the project timeline. You're trying to get decisions from the client. I'm in the yard trying to work out things with the lorries. I'm trying to work out staff. I'm trying to work out finance. I'm trying to plan my diary. I'm trying to go out with clients and suppliers. I'm trying to launch this new business we're doing. And then I'm just losing money because people are just coming and stealing off the job. It is long. Running a business at this level is so intense. You do get a bright day here and a bright day there. But I've got to tell you, man, the losses far outweigh the wins. You've got your guard up and you're against the ropes and you're just getting battered and all you've got to do is survive the round and then catch your breath and come out for the next round. If you don't do that day in and day out on a daily basis, every single, I'm at it every single day, you just won't survive. And if you're not intense and if you're careless, you will never move forward. At this level, unless you are on it 
and I'm talking on it and you are trying to watch everything and you can't watch everything, you're just running your company for everyone else. And sometimes you think you're doing good because you're not looking at certain details or you're not looking at areas. I guarantee you, if you sit there, there's always something to do. There's always somewhere you can improve, some way that you can manage it slightly better and try to get the best out of people or get the best out of what you're doing and try and diversify. And I ain't gonna say I'm struggling with it because I'm gonna get up and I'm just gonna do it anyway. But sometimes it's just long. How that rant started isn't how that rant finished. Anyway, I'm on time and there's meant to be a train coming in. But that's all I need now, for the train to be late or for the train not to turn up or some something to happen. Morning, okay. The train is here. But I can see a couple of things in the yard that are just annoying me already. And I've got to go and have a conversation and do it. Uh, well, at least the train's here. Trainer type one, 19 wagons, it's probably, you know, it's probably like three wagons, but I think it's 19 wagons. Each wagon was 75 ton. Let's get it offloaded. Shit light ringing me now. Michael, my brother. I am more stressed out than you. There's no uh, end to this much. nonsense. Nonsense all day. <laughs> Things you costing are. me money. What's happened now? Ah, oh, just <laughs> fellas went and went trying stealing from my building job yesterday. I've got X oh. amount of problems here. I got ah, oh, just I don't even know where to start, man. Just tell me that something worse has happened to you, and I feel a little bit better. What's happened to you today? Uh, drivers haven't turned in. Did you buy your newest lorry on an 06 plate? Yes, I've got a brand new 06 plate here now. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get a service van on a 04. Wow, okay. To follow it about. Mm. I'm on the road to success or something to that words. How, how are you after our antics on um, on Saturday for St. Patrick's Day? <laughs> oh, I've seen the video of you. That's what I was ringing you about. <laughs> you look worried. You may have seen the video of me, but we're all gonna see the video of you. <laughs> I thought, yes, I must ring my friend out early in the morning, but then I thought maybe he's not up. So what do they try and steal, steal off the site? Yeah, we're trying to steal pipe and just materials and this and that. What, like copper pipe and all that? Yeah. Case. They didn't get nothing though, did they? They got a bit. And then that's going to be thrown in the scrap. Yeah, and then I got to, re I got to replace it all at my own expense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sounds about right, doesn't it? Sweet. All right, mate. Speak to you soon. All right. All right, mate. Bye, bye, bye. Our um, IT genius provider team uh, remoted into my computer to do some bits, so I'm returning some phone calls I've missed. Michael O'Donovan got called call Andrew Southern and about five or six other people. I'm very excited that my water tank is now fully in place, but I'm gonna go and have a look at it later and show you it working. How are we, mate? All right. Was it a regen thing? Yeah, she's locked an inducement. It's been ignored too many times to have a static regen. So now what? Uh, I'm trying to get it to kick in. Okay, what, just by bringing it up to working temperature? Yeah, trying to, yeah. The 914, it kept coming up to have a regen, and instead of letting it do a regen, the boys cancelled it. Now Libra are trying to force it, and if they can't force it to do a regen, then I need to pay for someone else to come here and do this, because that's what you do. When it asks for a regen, you cancel the regen. Psst. Anyway. Jack, we're putting a double socket over here, an outdoor one, yeah? Yep, yeah, so you can use it, so you don't have to track everything all the way over there. Can't you put it on this, Mikey? Can't you drill this? I there? So Bartek complains. Don't do it, socket over there. <laughs> You're not allowed. <laughs> danger <laughs> what are you looking for where is the earth coming in the earth there it, there it is on the top mikey you want to put it on here or you want to put it on there better on here i think yes the yeah put it here and put it here with an isolator that way you don't have to track all the tires over there to cut them you can put plug your own stuff here and do it here yeah how are we looking with the lorries that are in it they all sound yeah all tire tread good pressures yeah, yeah. pressures good, good. Pressure's yeah. good, everything, yeah? Yeah, everything's good. So that'll, that'll, that'll sin today. 
so yeah. No, but if it's yeah. not here, you can't see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing an outdoor socket over here. If you saw before, uh, Jack had to go all the way over to the workshop for him to be uh, recutting the tires, as I've seen he's done on the tire on the end there. Nice, saving me peace. And it's legal. Yes, it is legal. Don't try it. People just trying to say things. No, it's not legal. Yes, it is. Mikey's just found the earth and he's gonna put an RCBO and a single socket. We need to put a couple of double sockets around so when people wanna plug something in and work, yes, of course, it's gonna be the IP, is it IP65 or IP67? I think it's IP65 rated sockets with the cover on the front of it. So you have to lift the cover, plug it in, and when you're done, pull it out. So we're gonna put that somewhere and we're gonna take a feed from here, but... All of these we made here, this is pipe we already had. By putting this like this, we've taken all the strain off the connection up there. Bend it round, little connection here. Right, wait, hold on, hold on. No, no, you think I'm silly? Next thing I gotta spend the rest of my day drenched. Again, bits we had around the yard. You turn it on, yeah? Let's check the pressure. Nah, man, let's just check the pressure. Don't leave it on. Right, right, one, two, three. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm talking about. Now we can fill water over there and we can fill it here at the same time. And when we got pours over 200 meters, we are not gonna run out of water. Fine and in place. So this was 450 kilograms with all the connections and everything. It's not going anywhere. It's on a perfectly firm base. It's been built up with concrete blocks. It has road plates, which means it's completely level. A job well done. Nice. It's Wednesday night. I'm going to catch up with the lads. Then eat there. Yan eat there. Simon's there. Apparently, we're just YouTubers. <laughs> <laughs> For once, um, we're not at Sheesh in Chigwell. We've come to West End. Uh, we've just come down to see Dylan and congratulate him. Fine setup. It is here. Fantastic, right? We'll already pull up on starters, so we have a bit of a gap. We'll be at the main, so we're just catching up. We are doing live roulette. Whoever loses is paying. <laughs> Everyone put a finger in. You only take your finger out if it goes red. Oh! Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Yes! Yeah. He started it as well. It was hey, you're there. Lads, congratulate me on the part. <laughs> Happy birthday. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk to you again. Happy yep. birthday. Right, right, right. <laughs> Thanks, <Adam. laughs> Cheers. Nice. And it tastes better when it's free. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Vodafone voicemail service for... This is the Vodafone voicemail service for... This is the Vodafone voicemail service for... Oh, seven, eight. Thursday morning. I'm on the road again. Michael O'Donovan's obviously not up out of bed yet. He's trying to swerve me, yeah? I've been trying to sort this riddle bucket out for a while, and I think that I'm not gonna get one unless I buy brand new, but I don't wanna buy a riddle bucket brand new because we're not gonna use it every day. It's gonna sit in the corner of the yard for weeks on end, and then for half a day, somebody might use it. Then they're gonna sit it down again. They're gonna pick it up again. And people are telling me all three, four, 5,000 pounds for a brand new riddle bucket that I'm barely gonna use. So I, I'm not doing all that. I need one for the 26 tonner. Speaking to a gentleman um, out the way up north, he was making a riddle bucket out of a five foot digging bucket and he stopped doing it because they're too busy so he showed me this and i think i can get this relatively cheap so i can send the flatbed up the m1 or i can try and get transport whichever's cheap i'll have to work out with the diesel and the driver wages and everything and then we'll bring it back into the yard and then my townie will put the pieces together because they've made all the pieces and that will we'll do our own makeshift riddle bucket that means we can pick up like some of the sandy gear and shake it and take the bigger rocks out of it meds is working on uh, the new business venture we're going down before we do any business, 
before anything happens. I want all my risk assessments, method statements, paperwork, everything that people need to do their job. I need it all in place. I need it Ashfield. I just need to ensure that I have put the necessary infrastructure and documentation in place. So on day one, it's not, where's this, where's that? This don't make sense. How can I do it? And everybody isn't scrambling. I'm providing everything that's needed so people can do the job. And that's my responsibility at this stage, just to keep everybody safe and to make sure that they've got everything that's needed. I've sketched a few of them out myself and I've drawn boxes and then I scan it and send it to meds. And then meds, he completely ash fills it. He has a whole library of all our images. He knows our colors, he knows the color codes. And that's how we get together um, all the paperwork and documentation. And once it's done, is done for a period of time, except for the risk assessments. You should probably revisit them every six months. But when you revisit them, it is key that you make a note of it. There's got to be somewhere on your risk assessments and method statement to say it was reviewed on this date by this person and sign it. And then you're going to have an ongoing history of, yes, we continue to check it. We continue to try to keep people safe. We are compliant. I'm calling Michael O'Donovan again. I want a bucket. Call this man here. He's slightly trying it still. Why are you ducking me? No, I'm not buying an old bucket. You can take How it. many buckets you got? Like 50, 60? No, I haven't even got that many buckets. I told you, I'll give Jack the scrap all the old buckets. All the buckets I've got are off the 20 tonners. There's loads of 5 tonner, 8 tonner buckets, but all the rest are off the 20 tonner buckets. I'm very disappointed. I thought we were pals. So am I. Because I would have, have got that the grand off you for a bucket. Oh, would you really? Out of invoice, then I'll put you on stop. Mate, you could put me on stop because I'll stop paying it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll have um, took you to court seven days later. Yeah? I'll have put a winding up petition on you. <laughs> yeah, he's going to wind up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll let you get on. I'm going here looking at a job. Go on, mate. All right. See ya. All right, mate. All right, mate. You soon. Had a look at a job. Uh, not sure if it will come off or we're going to price it but i did give the potential clients some advice and give them some outline budget figures because what they're planning on doing and the budget they've put in place uh, whether they use us or someone else that budget is not going to do the work i have that a lot where somebody brings me to the house and they say i want to do garage conversion i want to replumb rewire i want all the walls stripped back i want them all plastered i want new suspended ceilings i want to do a loft conversion i want to create a brand new ensuite and my house is 1500 square foot i live in london and there's a garden and i'm considering an extension and my budget's 60 grand now unfortunately it's not possible to do that amount of work for that much money now it's not the person's fault because they've never this is the first house that they've decided to do building work to so how would you know how much something costs like i don't know how much things cost in other people's fields sometimes they make those decisions on no information whatsoever they just pull figures out the air and then it's a massive shock to them but what's important is that people know before they start the building work you cannot do the job for this amount of money because if you start the work you're in a very difficult position because if the person you've chosen to do it has been very economical with the truth in the beginning and they've said they can do it and then they start and then your house is torn apart you're gonna have to find the money from somewhere otherwise you're gonna have no house at all you'll be in a worse position than before you started i do us out of loads of work by just telling the truth in the beginning this is going to cost x yeah but so and so said it costs half that well Good luck to you and good luck to them. Hopefully they can complete the job and you can have a fantastic house which you can enjoy for many years to come. Which is kind of like the conversation I just had. But what I said was, all right, let's break it down like this. How many people do you think are gonna work here? Five. How much do they work for a day? This much. Cool. How many days a week? Six. How long is the work gonna take? This, and we're doing maths. And then their budget, the figure, what they thought each person got paid a day, the labor was more than the budget for the entire job. And you ain't even put one screw in a wall. You haven't even pulled up the carpet yet. So I think it was a very valuable exercise for the property owner. And they were very disheartened and they were kind of upset. And as the messenger, as you see in 300, uh, Leonidas will kick the messenger down the well. But fortunately, I'm Leonidas, I'm not the messenger. Nobody ain't kicking me down no well, nor shall I offer earth and water as a gesture to King Xerxes. So I'm on the way back to the yard need to address something. Now, I'm getting a lot of DMs and friends messaging me. 
and even Terry in his infinite wisdom thought it would be a good idea to message me and they're sending me this recording from the QPR training ground where our new manager is talking to the players and he's decided to bring in a motivational expert and people are asking me what's going on and how comes this is happening and what I had to do with it. Just to be clear, uh, we sponsor QPR and we have a box, but I don't pick the team at QPR. I did not bring in that motivational speaker and I don't know what happened, nor was I there at the time, nor was I consulted, nor did I see any emails that asked my permission, nor did I sign off. So I don't really know what happened, but I, I also, I'm not a football manager and I can't tell you that it won't work. I'm a little bit of a motivational speaker. If you want to bring me into the QPR changing room, chat to the lads, I could do that. I can't comment. But all I can tell you is that I hope that it works because we definitely need it. And that's all I'm going to say on the matter. Back in the yard, I'm going to do a little test. We're going to see how long it takes to fill. The little stopwatch exercise here. The other tank at the moment is taking about 20 minutes to fill because in the yard, the pump goes wrong when the temperature drops to freezing and water's been left in it and the pump keeps cracking. Now I've changed it twice already and I ain't changing it again. So the water tower in the main yard, that's gonna be done off gravity, which is probably gonna come back and bite me because it takes 20 minutes to fill. So we're gonna test with a stopwatch how long this one takes to fill. So it's got to beat 20 minutes and We're off. Yes, yes, it's happening. I can see it. I can see it. There we go. All right, well, we're one minute in. I'm good at maths, yeah? That looks like one tenth. So I think this is going to be 10 minutes. Four minutes and it's here. Could be a new record. If we complete this in 10 minutes, that's roughly about 200 litres of me. I can't, I can't stop laughing. Someone else said it and I just stole it and made out like I calculated it. It's a Jokes if this is 10 minutes exactly. Oh. Hey, 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 hey. Well, let's do an action replay to see exactly the second that we cross the finish line. Oh. Hey, 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 hey. So it's under 10 minutes. A right, few minutes now, I've got to just. There wasn't. Why don't I go and do all this now? I've got to get myself all wet. Ah! I'm done. That means that somebody can fill water here and someone can fill water there at the same time. The person who's loading water over there can do cement. As soon as they pull out and go and get material, someone could do the water and material here, then go and get cement. So two of them can load at the same time. Perfect. 7.04. My last one in the yard. I'm about to leave and go gym. But earlier, I remember that I saw Mikey going up and down the stairs and I think he was putting in that external socket. Nice. Nice little waterproof box. I'm not using it. Goes back. That's it. For Thursday. In the yard. Heading to the gym. And of course, this machine is still sat here not working. This. Why would you cancel the regen? Why would you do that? How could that ever be a good idea, man? Anyway, that's enough. It's Friday. Time is 6.14 p.m. Firstly, happy St. Patrick's Day. Hope you all have a good one. I've had people sending me pictures all day of Guinness and Irish breakfasts and, and everyone's been out enjoying. <laughs> You've not been out enjoying. You know a day when you just spend your entire time doing something that generates no revenue, just fixing like mistakes. The tasks are so long and intricate and, the, uh, and there's so many decisions that need to be made and you're just you're just fixing things that you think should have been done anyway and it doesn't generate a penny of revenue and it's long and repetitious and every time you do one another 10 pop up which are no doing of your own and if you'd have just 
just decided not to do nothing and just have a simple life. None of that would be happening. You would just have a simple life and you'd be able to just enjoy your time like everyone else. But then again, would you be an old man full of regret, which would be worse? Anyway, some light did come into my day because finally at last, the luxury bathroom project, the second bathroom is complete. Now, whether you like the color or whether you don't, I call it like my pink galaxy bathroom. You have to admit that the craftsmanship and the finish and the work we've done is top notch. And for me, it's a nice space. And 100%, I can tell you that the uh, lucky owner of that bathroom will be enjoying it from this evening. I'm very happy with that. And that's the only thing I'm happy with today. That's it for Friday. Tomorrow morning, we're gonna start the refurbishment project because the underfloor heating is done in the basement and we are gonna start screeding in the hours. It's Saturday and I'm at a refurbishment project. Um, Chris is planning the waste pipes throughout the house now. So he finished the underfloor heating in the basement. So the next item we're gonna tackle is all the waste pipe. The bathroom plans, which you can see here, have all been finalized and the locations of the toilets are not gonna change. I hope. So Chris is gonna to start to map all of those out and begin to put um, the fixes in place to hold all of the 100 mil waste. As you can see, we're using a pump, but this is not our pump, this is a different type of pump. Our pump is for ready mixed concrete and this pump is for screen. So as you can see, sand is already coming down for the volumetric into this area. Now the underfloor heating pipes are in place, but what we've done is put ply down so we can walk over these pipes and not damage them. So when this floor level goes down, this will be the new floor level um, where we can then begin to build up all the stud partitions because there's gonna be a cinema over there. So there's gonna be a wall built up here. This is gonna be a complete um, uh, games area. So we need these walls to go in place. Then we can start running um, our electrics and our plumbing through the walls. Okay, so don't step on the pipes. So down in this area, you notice there's areas like this that doesn't have any underfloor heating. That's because the stairs from the ground floor is gonna come into this area. So there's absolutely no point heating underneath the stairs. There's another area over there where there's gonna be a cupboard built. There's nothing there. And there's an area over there that's just about to be covered by sand, but that also doesn't have underfloor heating because there's gonna be a cupboard. Within that cupboard, we have the underfloor heating manifold over there. So if you look on the top, the red ones are the feed. That's where the hot water goes into the system. The blue ones on the bottom are the return. And on the side of that, there are another two pipes. Now that is where the hot water comes from the boiler. Again, we have a feed and return. Dudek and I are just having a catch up. Um, I'm now gonna head back to the yard. I've got a couple of hours at the yard and then I need to be at QPR for half past 12. Hopefully we don't get another batter in, man. Oh my goodness, we held a nice old slap in the week. Uh, do you know people are messaging me? I heard Blackpool is nice at this time of year because Blackpool give us a beating. They said deep dish, man. Anyway, I'm gonna head back to the yard and the screeding work will continue. I'm actually in the tire bay myself, back in the yard. Tire fitters help, oh, the warning's gone. Eh, warning's gone off the dash. Um, had a warning uh, of low tire pressure, just pulled into the tire bay, tire fitter inflated my uh, tires slightly, and now we can work out if it was a puncture or not. Hopefully it wasn't a puncture and it was just a change in temperature. Why is there steam coming off Terry's car? What's going on here? I've been out on the road and there's no steam coming off my car, but there's steam coming off Terry's car. Oh, what's going on here? Where's Terry been? Interesting. 
while I was out this morning on site, we had a delivery. Here it is. This is going to be our riddle bucket. Now this is a strong bucket. Look at those teeth, going to be replaced soon. But the actual steel itself, look at that. Someone's already started strengthening that up. They cut out a piece and put a new piece there. It looks really strong. That's a big old bucket. And these are all the little bits of steel that we're gonna use. This area over here, uh, we're gonna build that area up. Nice. Oh, someone's already tried to put a little strengthening piece. Someone started their project, but they didn't have time to finish it. But we are in desperate need of a riddle bucket. I think that must be about five foot. So we're going to get making that on Tuesday. I would say Monday, but being St. Patrick's Day this weekend, my town is celebrating. I doubt I'll see him on Monday. So Tuesday will make a start. Just landing at QPR. Uh, before I left the yard, I was having a conversation with Terry. Yeah, I said something and he said, Oi, be careful what you wish for. And we got into the conversation a bit more. And do you know what? Terry's right. Yeah. Terry said to me, when he was young, he looked at this guy, I won't mention his name, and he said, He's at a big haulage firm running all these lorries. They're going to do so much. When I grow up, I want to be like that man. That must be a great position to be in. <laughs> and Terry said, Here I am. And I wish he told me at the time how it would have been. Same for me. If you'd have told me 15, 20 years ago, we'd have a yard running trains, our own machines, trucks, and everything that we're doing at the moment, I would have said, wow, I only wish something like that could happen. Trouble is, when you look on the outside, you only see the top of the iceberg. You don't see how much of the ice is still left in the sea. So when you see someone doing something, you don't actually realize what that entails and the amount of work it entails and what it takes from you. But there are worse problems you could have. Ah, it's thankfully stopped raining. There is a police presence, uh, not as big as a Millwall game but Birmingham are a big club, so there is some police presence and they've probably filled both the top and bottom stand. <clears throat> Let the games begin. The only thing I can relate that to in a lorry is, and I'm not sure if that's the case with a lorry, but you know when you're going downhill? Yeah. You don't want it in the highest gear. So no. you, you control it by putting into a lower gear. Yeah, so I'm using the engine. I'm using my engine for braking. For braking. Yeah. Let's start with this situation. Situation one. Uh, too mm -hmm. high. That's the case. Then I'd pull off more power. That, perfect. So the only way you can keep that speed mm -hmm. is by diving towards the ground quicker. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do you see by diving towards the ground quicker, mm -hmm. you will find yourself doing something like this and okay. coming to your mm -hmm. desired descent mm -hmm. rate. Let's say you find yourself in a position that, well, number two, mm -hmm. too low. I would give more power, but pull my nose up a that's little it. bit. Yeah, that's But in that order. Yes. That's what we're going to do uh, today. Initial part of the lesson, because I know you'll get through this fairly quickly. If we can get to this stage today, mm -hmm. our next lesson will be stalling. Mm -hmm. And then we're into um, a circuit outside. Okay. However, if this is really good, I mm -hmm. won't bother with the circuits outside. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. However, if you feel you want the circuits out, so you just let me know. Okay. I know you'll say, let's go straight into the circuit. You won't say, I want to practice outside, but mm -hmm. we'll go from there. All right, we set to go? Good. All right, let's rock and roll. Sunday morning. We're at Denham Airfield for another lesson. Trying to become a pilot. Start Asheville Airlines. The fire truck has put the siren on, so we are all fit to fly. Or this is right and you leave it there 
of what then takes your focus again is that balance ball. Yeah. So you go back to the balance ball inside the cockpit and then you'll take two moves away. Yeah. Descending um, really well. You've yeah. understood the concept. You've understood the concept it. really, uh, really uh, well. I, I, can, I can descend. Uh, you know. Out there you're doing it really, really well. Out there you're turning really, really well. And you still haven't introduced the flaps. Okay. So once I've given that introduction, yeah. you get better to separate. Yeah. Climbing straight and level, brilliant. I've got that. Checks, you've never been good at them. It yeah. involves a bit of homework and, yeah. and yeah, God forbid I'm, Daniel does homework. Homework's not really my forte, <laughs> man. <laughs> And that's it for Asheville Weekly episode 128. I'm done.